Hi, you're tuned in to Gospel Interviews Live. I'm Larry W. Robinson. Gospel Interviews Live features special guests for an unedited, unscripted, unrehearsed conversation about anything gospel. You never know who will drop by to join me on the broadcast. So stay tuned for exciting conversation right here on Gospel Interviews Live with your host, Larry W. Robinson. Stay tuned. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm your host, Larry W. Robinson. With me today on GospelInterviews.com, the one and only Pastor Deborah B. Morton. Pastor Morton, welcome to the broadcast. Uh, hi, how are you? It's a blessing oh. to be with you. Oh, thank you. I am excited. Um, I got your new single with Lifted Hands, and I must say I love it. And um, oh, that's on the, that's so much. Oh, no problem. And it's actually available now on iTunes and all of the other digital download stations that people can visit and get it, correct? That's correct. Thank the Lord. All right. Now, before we get into our interview, I just want to just, I don't know who don't know you, but for the few people that may not know who Pastor Deborah B. Morton is, uh, she's actually the wife of recording artist and recording artist and pastor, Bishop Paul S. Morton. She's the mother of recording artist P.J. Morton. She's the senior pastor of the Greater St. Stephen's Full Gospel Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana, as well as co-pastor of Changing a Generation Full Gospel Church in Atlanta, Georgia. So there are one church in two different states. And she's the international general overseer of the Daughters of Promise for the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. So, uh, again, welcome to the broadcast. You're also an author, an entrepreneur. What don't you do and how do you balance it all? <laughs> Oh, my God, I'm getting tired just listening to you. <laughs> I, if God, you know, I, I teach this and I preach it. The anointing is, the, the well, first of all, the anointing is, in a simple way, I, I define it as the empowerment of God. But it's for a reason, not just to walk around, I'm anointed. It is for an assignment. And I have been assigned to do I'll say most of what I do. I might get off the track every now and then. But for most of what I do, I've been assigned to do it. And I thank the Lord because all my friends and associates, uh, they say, what in the world, where do you get all that energy from? You know, why in the world? How many states have you been in this week? But my, both my husband and myself, and I thank God and I honor him. I thank God for him. He's not just my husband, but he's also my pastor. And the anointing flows down from your leaders. And he's a busy body, always on the go. And together, you know, we move together sometimes. We move separate. Uh, we've been married um, 36 years, 37 in December. So, you know, God has ordained it to be this way. And uh, we're just enjoying the ride. All right. Now, you know what? I'm still, and I love the new single, but I'm still a huge fan of that first project where there's a will, there's a way. With oh, Pastor, my uh, God. Yeah, that was the CD. Nancy, uh, Pastor Nancy Wilson was on there, Beverly Crawford. I love um, the music. And then I love those uh, sermonettes that came between the songs. Oh, that was a wonderful effort that the women you know, put forth, and, you know, God really blessed us. We won an award for it. Oh, wow. To my surprise, I wrote two or three of the songs on there. I'm getting young, you know. I don't know if it was two or three. <laughs> and <laughs> and I just, you know, he's just faithful. And I love music. I've been in the choir since the Sunshine Band. Oh, wow. At, at my church. So I've been around music, love music you know, cherish the worship of the Lord. I'm a worshiper, even in my private time. And, I, you know, like some artists, they only like the sound. But I enjoy other worshipers because, you know, they are skilled, much more skilled than I am, some of them. And I, if you're going to worship God and take me to the presence, I'm with you. I buy other people's CDs. You know, I don't kids taught me how to download and all that stuff. Uh -oh. I'm on it because, so that CD, Nancy, Pastor Nancy, Kim, Max, this talented, awesome song is, they really blessed a lot of lives. We hear that a lot. People saying, 
I'm still stuck on where there's a will, and I wrote that song, Where There's a Will, There's a Way. When I was in Hawaii on a fast, the women were fasting, and a uh, 30-day fast, and I refused to come off the fast even in Hawaii, and God was faithful and gave me that song. So That's I just awesome. praise him for that. Now, now you said that you are, you're a worshiper. Of course, the the latest CD, the latest uh, single is titled "With uh, Lifted Hand." Now, did you write that song with lifted hand? I did not. Carnell Morell, who is a fabulous anointed prophet of God, met me one night. In the next morning, uh, called I called him. We exchanged numbers at a conference I preached at, mm -hmm. and I called. I told him I would call him because. Someone had recommended him to preach, and I called him the next morning to say to him, uh, ask him if he could minister. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, we had a new work at the Joy Theater, ask him if he could come and minister. And he said, um, yes, and by the way, the Lord gave me a song for you. Wow. I'm like, really? And you know, you're like, okay. <laughs> I just met him, you know. All right. So, sure enough, the Lord had given him a song for me, and he didn't sing it. He said, call it with lifted hands. Mm -hmm. And when we got into the service, in the heat of the Holy Spirit moving with the prophetic, uh, he, my daughter, who was having difficulty getting pregnant, he called a lot of ladies up for a female problem, and she was one of them. He didn't know anybody. Of course, I just met him. Prophesied over my daughter. He was like, I spoke to somebody. I feel it just was the pastor morning or something. And everybody started saying, this is my, this is her daughter. He was like, huh, I can't hear you. And I, I whispered. I said, that's my daughter. He was like, wow. So he prophesied that she would have a baby. She is now eight months pregnant, getting ready to deliver next month. And then he began to sing the song. And he told the musician, just hit this, it's simple. And I began to weep because the song was something like I would write. Wow. And I knew God had given him, as he said, I knew he was a true man of God. He is so skilled. He's worked with Jolinda Clark. He's worked with several people. He's residing. He's from Dallas, but he's residing in um, Detroit. He's worked with Disney and God definitely gave him that for me, and the proof is in the pudding. So he wrote it, and he, he co-produced it with Michael. He used to play with Tommy Whitfield. So I had some really powerful people with me, and, um, it, you know, there we, there we go. We have the project. Right. Well, now, it, when, when I heard it, it did sound like something that you wrote, because um, you just sing it like you wrote it for yourself. Don't you agree? I, I mean, I that's exactly why I wept. I said, I would write, because he didn't know my background or anything. I mm. said, that is the song that I would write. Mm. He said, really? I said, absolutely. And so what happened, he came and did a two-night revival at our church. Um, and he began to sing it again, and he asked me to sing it in the high of the height of the spirit and I did and everybody just began to worship in a very powerful way. And so it was kinda of like, when are you gonna record this? Mm -hmm. So in the last minute I was so busy about two months ago I said, I'm going to Detroit. I went in twenty four hours or less than that. I would say eighteen hours it took me to fly to get there, six hours to produce it. The next morning, five o'clock in the morning, I was out. And that's the song. My daughter is a graphic artist. She did the cover in a very beautiful way. Christiane Morton. Christiane, I need. I have to say I have no name for her. <laughs> and so God just did it, you know? He just did it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know yeah. what? I, I know that worship is your vein. Of course, you like to preach and teach, but I know that you like to worship as well. And, uh, you know, on Wednesday nights, I do something called the Worship Leaders Roundtable. We gather worship leaders Ooh. from around the country and just kind of discuss some issues and concerns of worship leaders as well as the praise team. But here's a question for you. How important, and we've asked this many times on the broadcast, and I wanted to ask it to you. How important is it for the leaders, especially the pastors, uh, to worship God in the in the service 
so that the the audience or the the members can see, you know, this is what we do. This is what we've been created to do, as opposed to just kind of sitting and waiting until worship is over. But get in on the worship as well. Mm-hmm. It's so very important that the head worships. If you go to scripture, and I'm I'm good, I'm I'm, I'm I should say I'm bad at that. Some people don't like it, but I go to the scriptures for my instruction, for my guidance, and then the interpretation from the spirit. For the application of it on today, you know, and God, He explicitly says that the Levitical tribe, the priest, mm-hmm. should worship. Many times, the move of God and even kings. I just preached Sunday on Solomon, how the temple filled with smoke as he prayed and worshiped God, petitioned God. It is just the order of things. David danced before the Lord. His wife was upset. Uh, people don't understand it, and many times in a position of leadership, um, we are cautious, uh, I guess, because of how it may look to others, or I don't know what the case may be, but we, it's important that we worship, not just for the people to see us, but for God to see us. Mm, that's good, yeah. You know, I, God, I'm here. And when you say you're here, I'm here, I'm here, and I'm here for this particular purpose. Um, to worship, you got to have your focus on God. I mean, for Him to really get the glory out of what you're doing. You got, so when you say you're here, it means I'm present. Because as a pastor, I know, and a leader, we have so much going on. You could not be present the first part of the service so you, until your turn because you're still administrating you're still watching but when we worship and that's why I love worship because when folk have worked on my nerves in the back <laughs> and when I get to the front and still working on my nerves I see stuff that's not right I, when I go into that place of worship it's over whatever's not right God you can help and get it right I came here to praise you so present being present is so important that God says, okay, they're present. They're here to worship me. And the people see it, and the people start learning, turning their attention. Okay, pastor is not even thinking about us right now. It's all about the Lord. The worship leader is not thinking about their team and what they have on, the wrong clothes, whatever. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm done with that. I'm getting ready to praise God and shift the whole atmosphere if the leader comes out, right? Because we are the, there was a book I taught on years ago, The Upfronters. Mm-hmm. I can find that book. Years ago, I taught on it. And it's about the people up front. You got to be up front. And there's a certain mm-hmm. posture. Mm-hmm. So I could go on and on. I know this is an interview. Don't start talking to me about worship here. <laughs> you don't want to be on the phone a long time. Uh, no, that's good. Because I got it. I got the revelation. I'm good. I understand that oh, I'm, I'm to worship. And when we say, I'm still a worshiper, well, we all better be worshipers. Right. We all better be. But the leaders, as you said, we really can get caught up and forget right. that we've been called to worship. Right. And uh, I want to admire them and exhort them, you got to worship. Right. you got to yeah. worship. I'll let everything go. Forget about all those things. After the up front, it's time to praise him and let everything else be second and let him be first. So, you know, that that's where I am with that and, uh, you know, but it's pleased with that. That's good. You know, even on the broadcast, we say, you know, they, they we call ourselves worship leaders, but the actual chief worship leader of the house are the pastors. That's right. Yeah, uh, because um, I told the church the other week, I'm supposed to be anointed, empowered mm-hmm. to serve him. And I said, if, if I said, pardon me and forgive me for the days I wasn't anointed, because I'm supposed to be, whether you are or not. Right. So if I'm anointed, meaning I'm empowered by God, that means I'm in his presence. I, you know, and that's what, like you said, we're the leaders. We're the real leaders. Of worship, lead the people into worship. 
Amen. So uh, David was the king, God's man, and not necessarily being the preacher, but he was a man of God that led the people at that time. He had to worship. He had to worship and lead the people into worship. So he's a great example for anybody. We talk about him, but, you know, I'm not good at churchy stuff. People get churchy. David, you know, they talk about him, but let him be your example. Right. Let him be your example. So that's my explanation on that. That's good. That's good. Talking today with Pastor Deborah B. Morton. She's the senior pastor of the Greater St. Stephen's Full Gospel Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana, as well as co-pastor along with her husband, Bishop Paul S. Morton of the Changing the Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, now, Pastor Morton, you're also an entrepreneur, and I love it. Uh, you have several ventures going on. How important is it for believers to tap into their gifts and start bringing some of those witty inventions and ideas to the forefront and to the marketplace. It's time for really uh, us to become kingdompreneurs. Well, we are uh, a city within a city. Mm-hmm. We are, we are uh, the, uh, what am I trying to say? We are the people of God. And we must um, show the world how to, how to do it. Mm-hmm. We've got to show the world how to do it. And so my thing is to to help people, as you said, tap into their gifts. And I, as you said, I'm big on that, of people tapping into their gifts because I'm not the only person in the church that's talented. I'm not mm -hmm. the only person in the church that's supposed to be blessed. And my job, you know, your anointing of game is what God for your gift. And that's my area of uh, being able to motivate people into that area to be well balanced. Not just stay in the church house all day, but take the church. You are the church. Make it portable. Go out into this dark world and give light. And many of us are anointed in different areas. Education, uh, math, figures, finances. Well, if we're the light of the world, we can't stay in the church. You go out there and make it happen, and then when we say, well, you know, it's because of God, and God has empowered me. God blessed me. Oh, you're so smart. No, the Lord did it. All of that is our witness in this dark world, that there is a God that we depend on that helps me to be successful. I'm, I'm not against prosperity. God said my people will be a prosperous people. But how are you going to get there? Sitting down on the church bench, shouting, Praising God, no, you get it after you leave the house, go and work in your anointing, in your gifting, and then then shouting all the way to the bank, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Talk, <laughs> yes. Talking today with Pastor Deborah B. Morton, her current, pro, her current single is titled With Lifted Hands, and you can get it everywhere, great music is sold, uh, iTunes, Amazon, even Google Play, and all of your digital download Stations. Well, in our last few moments together, Pastor Morton, first of all, thank you so very much. For, and I know this is a busy season for you, so I don't take it lightly that you took time to, to talk with me today. But in our final yes. moments together, if we have someone that's been listening to the broadcast and uh, they are in this economic uh, economic climate and they've been waiting on a promise for God from God and it seems like it's not going to come to pass, what advice do you have for them? First of all, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, so be encouraged and be strengthened. But then you're going to mount up on wings, and they're going to run, and they're going to walk, and they won't think. Um, our faith is not proven when we give up. It's proven when we hold on. And faith, you know, is a walk. And so you got to keep walking, and in that walk, that faith is actually believing that I'm walking towards what God has promised. And obstacles are going to come. Of course, the enemy does not want God to get that glory. Because when you have people see you, oh, Lord, I thought they said this was going to happen. You're still walking. Oh, my goodness. Are they crazy? Why are they doing that? You're still walking. But when the promise is fulfilled, there's nothing but glory all around you. Mm -hmm. And you can test that your opportunity. That's when God said, when I'm glorified, you'll be glorified with me. Uh, that's your chance to say, well, you saw me walking, you saw me struggling, you criticized me, 
you laughed at me, but in the end, you saw that this was my God, my my God walk. And so now, can you rejoice with me? Uh, there's a project out, and uh, as I you know close this interview, uh, Leon Kipton. Yeah. Lord Jesus, I've been That's playing one of that. That's my favorite. Has, <laughs> this child has blessed me. But there's a song he sings, and I, I brought it to my ministry. You have won a game. Mm-hmm. Make the doubters. Yeah. Prove the doubters wrong. You have won again. I'm telling you, see, that'll make me shout right now. That's my song. That's what, <laughs> that's, okay, we're in one accord. Um, and I know some background noise is coming up, so I don't want to mess up this. Thank you so much for interviewing me, but you keep walking until you can say that, God, and say that all the way through your walk. Prove the doubter is wrong, even if the doubter is you. You have yeah, won again. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, this has been a, a conversation with Pastor Deborah B. Morton. She is the senior pastor of the Greatest St. Stephen's Full Gospel Baptist Church. Uh, in New Orleans, Louisiana, as well as co-pastor of Changing the Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, with her husband, Bishop Paul S. Morton, Sr. Her current project is titled With Lifted Hands, and you can find it wherever great music is sold. Do me a favor. Tell our listening audience how they connect with you. Now, let me ask you. Are you tech savvy? Are you on your own um, Facebook oh, and yes. all that? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I'm Pastor D. Morton at, um, on Twitter. Okay. Um as well as on Facebook. And, of course, I'm um, my website is Deborah Lee Morton Ministries. Uh, they can go there. My church website is Greater St. Stephen Ministries. They have a new app. They can download it. And they can find me. All right. nav- they can navigate their way into all the areas uh, that I'm working in. I have a camp this summer. I started two years ago in arts and entertainment summer camp uh, that is closing out again this summer, uh, guiding our kids into other areas of education Mm -hmm. uh, who do not do well in the traditional setting. So uh, we're just thanking God and thanking you, man of God, for um, this time. Just keep us in prayer and keep your hands lifted. Amen. Well, again, thank you so very much for sharing with with our listeners, and I will see you soon. Okay. God bless. All right. God bless you. You've been tuned in to Gospel Interviews Live, an unedited, unscripted, unrehearsed conversation about anything gospel. I'm your host, Larry W. Robinson. This broadcast was produced by TC for TC Productions. The music bed was provided by Angela Christie from her latest release, The Breath of Life. For more information about this particular broadcast, visit our official website at www.gospelinterviews.com. 